So I was 18 has just officially came out and I wanted to go ahead and kind of give you a quick beginner's guide on exactly how to use this particular you know, new software. Now, a big thing to keep in mind, there's nothing super crazy going on here. To install it, it's very basic, but I would recommend every single person, if you're watching this when it's still in the beta form, I would not recommend installing the beta. It can cause lots of issues, lots of problems, and I really wouldn't recommend any single person to go ahead and install the beta on their main phone. However, if you have a side device, or if you don't care, or if you're watching this three, four, five months from now when it's officially out, then you can go ahead and just follow these instructions. So to update, what you want to do is you want to make your way over into your settings application, scroll down into general, and what you want to do here is you want to go and get into your software update panel, which is right here. Now under software update, you're going to be able to see all the little options right here that will basically tell you all the you know cool things, and it's going to give you a little option of installing iOS 18. You may want to click on beta updates if you want to install the beta and choose iOS you know, 17 or iOS 18 here. That's an option you have, but nothing super crazy, nothing you know, insane that you have to do as of this point. Now, when you do that, the next thing you want to do is you probably want to get familiar with the whole entire iOS ecosystem that is iOS you know, 18. So the home screen is still basically the same thing. The widget panel is exactly the same thing as well. So the core concept of this phone is still about the same thing as iOS 17. But the first place I want to start off with is our lock screen. So within our lock screen, we have a new customizing panel. We can customize the bottom toggles on our particular iPhone. So if we hold down on our you know, home screen right here and we click customize at the very bottom, you can go and customize your current wallpaper or a new one or whatever one you want. And you can go and delete or re you know, maneuver these bottom toggles, which is actually very cool. So you can go through here, you can delete the flashlight toggle and the camera toggle, and you can click on the plus button and you can bring in another toggle if you want to. So that is something that's actually really cool. You can kind of maneuver through here and choose whichever other toggle that you want to. So if I wanted to go ahead and add a timer, I can go and add a timer and I can just go and click on add at the very top and it will go ahead and add that particular timer there and that's all I have to do. Swiping back up, you can also modify your home screen within iOS 18. So before all the apps would basically be lined up just like so, but guess what? Now we can go ahead and move our app icons down and around and move them wherever we want to just like this. So if you want to, you can grab your particular icon right here and you can bring it down and you can kind of maneuver around your whole entire ecosystem just like this, which is really cool. You can also hold down on your lock screen right here. You can go and click on edit home screen one more time and you can click on edit at the very top left, which is right here. You can go and click on customize. And then what you can do is you can go and, you know, turn your particular app icons into dark mode, you can turn it back into light mode, or you can click on tinted and you can change the tint of these particular colors as well. So that's another crazy thing that you can do within iOS 18. It's a really, really cool feature. I'm very happy Apple kind of threw something like this in this particular phone. You can get back into here. You can change the color back to what you just did before. Now, another cool application we have within iOS 18 is passwords. So what you can do is you can click on passwords right here, and you can go and basically see that this is a new passwords application we have within iOS 18. It's a very cool feature that we have here as well. So it saves all your passwords. It's cross-platform. You can even get it on Windows, which is really crazy. So that's another really cool app that we have here as well. Hopping out of here, Control Center is another big app, another big side, you know, within iOS 18 that has been changed like crazy. So swiping down from the top right corner, you can get into your Control Center. So within here, this is brand new. So there's a few different pages within your Control Center here. They give you the same functionality, but it's just kind of broken down a little bit nicer. In the top right corner, there is a power button. So you can tap on the power button if you want to quickly just you know power down your phone. You can just tap into here if you want to quickly just slide the power off. Very, very convenient. In the top left corner, if you click on that, you can go and customize your control center even further. So you can go ahead and basically delete the, the toggles. You can add toggles. If you click at the very bottom, the little add a control pot, you know, button, when you click on that, you'll basically see this little page come up. And it's very similar to your toggle page on your you know, on your lock screen. What you can do here is you can go and add in a you know, specific Thing that you like the most and you can go and add that in here and that's another really cool thing that you have the ability of doing so you can customize your control center whichever way you want to and this is in and of itself once again another very cool thing that you have the ability of doing here as well now swapping back out another cool thing that we have is the ability of locking applications on our particular iphone i'll save that for a different video but we do have the ability of locking our applications with face city on our particular iphone as well Another cool thing that I noticed is that when you actually go and click the volume down button or the power or the volume up button or the power button, you'll sometimes see that when you go and hold these things down, there's a little animation that comes off on the sides of the particular sides of the iPhone for the buttons. And I just noticed that if you look closely, you can kind of see it. It's a really cool thing. So that's another really small little tweak that Apple kind of threw in here too, which I actually liked a lot. 
Now iMessage got a lot of improvements within this particular update as well. So if I go and load into iMessage, I'll go and basically go into an empty message that I had with myself right here. First of all, we now have the ability of having a little bit more of a nicer tap back option. So if you want to, if you hold down on a particular message like this, you'll see at the very top, you have your tap back option that you had before, but now they're color coded, which is nice. And also there's a few more just quick options that you have right here, which are just the last you know emojis you used. But the coolest thing is you can you know basically tap back with a custom emoji. So if you click on this little smiling plus you know emoji that's on the right side right here, you'll go and see this little bottom. And all you're going to have to do here is basically swipe around until you find an emoji that you actually like. And at that point, you'll be able to like actually talk back and tap back with an actual emoji, which is actually super cool. And it gives you a little bit more customizing, I guess, for your particular thing. Now, you can also schedule iMessages as well. So this is something that's actually very, very cool. And it's by using their send later option. So if you come right into here, if you come into iMessage, you'll see this plus button. If you go and tap on it, if you swipe down, you'll see this little send later option. If you go and tap on a send later, you'll see a little option that says, you know, basically you can type in your text, but then the bottom, you can go and type in exactly when you want to send this text at. So if you want to send it at 9 a.m. tomorrow or whatever on another day, you can go and send this whichever way you want to, and you can have it automatically send it just like here. And it's actually a super cool thing. You can still exit out of it and delete it if you want to by clicking here and it'll go and delete it, I think, or you can go and click on edit here. Or you can go and delete the message, edit the time, send the message to. That's another really cool thing that you have the ability of doing here. RCS message is also supported here as well. And there's also ways that you can text or you can like, you know, leave a, you can underline text, you can, you know, bold text. You can do all sorts of things with an iMessage now too, which again is super, super awesome. Now out of here, you also have game mode that is eventually coming to our iPhones. If you're watching this in the future when game mode is officially out, you can go and type in your settings. You can go and search bar and just type in game mode and you should be able to find game mode and you can go and toggle that on if you really like. Apple Maps got a pretty big update. We can now tap to cache and event tickets look a lot better. Journal got an update as well. And the photos application also got an update. Now this photos app is kind of all over the place. I think it is a little bit messy for the most part, but I think it will get better over time. So you can see right here, you can see the recent days, it's broken down like this. All of your photos are built up right here. One thing Apple did actually demonstrate though, was that you can quickly filter things out. So if you go and click on this little search bar button over here, you can go and quickly search for things if you want to. You can do recently viewed, you can view things from last year or the year before, so many things like that. You can also click on the top right corner right over here. And you can go and get access to more things within your particular options as well. And you can kind of, kind of, you know, modify your particular settings that way as well. But this photos app is crazy. You can click on the bottom left if you want to, to actually filter. So if you click here, you can sort by recently added, sort by date captured, you can sort by the filter option right here. And you can even add all items. You can go into, you know, strictly favorites, edited photos, video screenshots. So it gives you the same features. It's just slightly different in the way they kind of demonstrated it for the most part. So. That's another cool thing here. And overall, those are kind of the biggest improvements within iOS 18. As I mentioned, there are lots of cool things that iOS 18 actually ended up bringing. And I do think it was a super nice update and I would probably recommend every single person to install it when it officially comes out. But as of right now in a beta, I wouldn't recommend any single person to install it on their main device. So that pretty much covers it up here. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.